Now we're going to make the program that will have your canine robot drive straight using the gyroscope. This should be pretty simple seeing what we've done so far. We should be able to just go ahead and make a function for it. Um, I hope that you've tried to make this yourself first uh, based on what you've learned already. Um, but otherwise we'll just jump right into it. So we're going to make a new function. That way we can go straight for a while and then change and go straight for a while again. So this will be a public void, I'm going to call it drive straight. This is going to take in a integer of duration, which will be our encoder counts, a double of power, and it's going to throw interrupted exception. That way we can use the wait one full hardware cycle. Remember we have those variables, so I'm going to declare those now. And because the speeds are going to be between 0 or negative 1 and 1, we'll make them doubles. That way we can have uh, decimal points on them. Our target. Our target in the, in the open video was just 0, but what if we're not facing 0? Well, if we do this like halfway through our program, we want to make target be wherever we're facing at that point. So we're going to call this mrgyro.get integrated z value. And we're only going to set that once, and then we're going to use that target throughout the rest of the function. We also need to know where our encoders start. We're going to base this just off our left encoders. We could also do it as an average of the of the two, but we're just going to do the left in this program. So we need to know where it starts. That way we'll go until the encoder position is past the start position plus the duration. And in fact, that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to say while the current position is less than duration plus the start position, we're going to continue to drive straight and adjust our powers. Now in the video we called this absolute, but in Android Studio we're going to have the, the variable be called z accumulated. You could also make it absolute if you wanted to. And we're going to update this every time, so that's why it's inside of our while loop. Then we're going to go into our equation. So left speed equals power plus z accumulated minus target, divide by 100. And this 100 is only dividing this part, so then that's going to be between negative 1 and 1 to match a scale of this guy and that guy. I'm not going to go into exactly what the equation is because uh, we did that in the intro video. If you haven't seen the intro video, of course, go back and do that now. We need these parentheses here because it's really power minus the accumulated minus minus target, so plus target. If we didn't have them, it would be power minus the accumulated minus target instead of adding target. So those parentheses are important for the second equation, but make it look nice, we'll put them in both. Then we're going to clip the, the range to make sure it's between negative 1 and 1. Otherwise, it will throw an error and stop our program. So we're going to say left speed is range dot clip left speed between negative 1 and 1. Same thing with right speed. Then we're going to set the powers. So m left dot set power m right dot set power then we'll throw some telemetry data back. I'm going to copy this over because I think you guys can also choose what you want your telemetry data to be. But I'm going to display the 
left speed, the right speed, and the distance to go. So this is the difference between the current position we're at and the distance we're waiting to get to when the robot will stop. And then after that, we gotta make sure we wait one full hardware cycle to make sure that these powers can get to those motors and then coder values can get back to us. And after we satisfy this while loop, then we wanna stop the motors. I want to make sure that that zero power also gets to the motors. That's it. So now we're going to loop around here as long as we're going straight and adjust the power, or, and as long as we're not at the distance we want to get to, and adjust the power. Once we get to the position we want to get to, then we will stop the motors and move forwards in the program. So up here, we could write something out like drive straight for duration and power. And then it's going to stop. Then we could do a turn absolute. Uh, so that, that's it. You can start by using your drive straight. Maybe have a sleep after there so then you can actually see it stop and, and get to its position. That's it. So go ahead and try this out. Probably take your turn absolute out for the first time. Make sure it's working out great. And then I challenge you, this is the next challenge, is to make your robot drive in a square. And then make it drive in different shapes. Try to get it to navigate its obstacles by using the combination of your drive straight method and your turn absolute method. Both of which are still in here. We didn't delete the turn absolute method. It's still here. It's still down here. So you can use both of those in here. You could drive straight and then turn and drive straight, turn, sleep for a little bit, drive straight, turn, turn, drive straight. And you keep going around, you could put a for loop in there so you can drive straight and then turn and do that four times. So go ahead, go forth and make your robot navigate its obstacles using these two functions we made. So over here, I've got the K9 robot. It's got a gyroscope on it. I have my driver station. I'm going to select my program and say init, and then the gyroscope is going to calibrate. And then once it stops being blue, I'll press the play button and it'll drive down. Now this is only at 30% with drive with encoders, so it's going kind of slow. You can obviously speed it up, of course. Um, and if another robot comes along and bumps you, His head's not under power. You have to excuse that. Just turn right back around to where he was and keep going straight.